Hey, um, welcome to the Obershare Pamphlet. My name is Rob, and I'm the host of this one-man show. Welcome back to my usual listeners, and welcome if you're new. And if you are new, you can follow me um, on my personal social media, on TikTok, Twitter, or Instagram. Those are, the, I guess, the platforms that I use the most in that sense. And there's also an, a Twitter page for the podcast itself. But everything will be in the description of the podcast, so you can find my account names there. But fully on Instagram, you know, Instagram, <laughs> I post the most there, like I post so many stories there, I don't know, I have mental illness for Instagram stories, but my handle for Instagram is Rob Scal, Rob Scal, so S-C-A-L, dot JPEG, so G-P, uh, J-P-G, what the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, we're back to our usual schedule, to our usual programming in that sense, um, and we have two topics to discuss today. I want to do something fun, so the first one is going to be Grammy t- prediction, like 2024 Grammy predictions, because it's um, award seasons, I couldn't do much about Emmys, Golden Globes, and I honestly um, i am always very interested in the Grammys, to be fair, so... Since I think that the results are coming out first weekend of February, so it's good timing, you know. I'll do predictions this week, then next week is going to be something different, of course. Nothing Grammy related, I think. And then when the Grammy, um, when it's Grammy night, I'll probably cover the winners and all that. So, yeah, I'll be getting into like some prediction uh, um, regarding like the winners, who I think should win, and who I think will maybe win, pro- most likely win, maybe I'll be wrong, I'll place my bets, you know, and maybe you guys should do it too, you know, it's a fun little game, so that's uh, the first topic I'm gonna be discussing today, and I also have, as a second story, Poor Things, the movie, I'll, I'll do a spoiler-free review, so I'll just go over, I'll go over like, the, the movie, not the plot specifically, like, per se, but I'll do a bit of that, because I went to watch it um, last weekend, like, actually it was Sunday, or maybe it was Monday, I can't remember, but, yeah, it's one of the, um, critically acclaimed, uh, movies of the, well, of 2023, but it's, it's getting a lot of, like, appraisals now with, uh, during the award season, so, um, yeah, I'll be discussing that as well, but before, of course, we get into that, we have our usual tracks of the week, so, tracks of the week, oh, before I get into that, actually, I have to shout out my friend Clara again, because she gave me a great idea, which is to just put, basically, all the songs of the week of every episode into a playlist. My th- uh, thinking in that is probably I'll do, like, a um, monthly uh, playlist. I guess so, because I, I do point out a lot of tracks every episode, so I'll, to avoid, like, having a very, like, an overly long uh, playlist, I'll probably do like a monthly one, but I think, yeah, you can just search either on Spotify, like the Overture Pamphlet, Songs of the Week, and the playlist hopefully will come out, but I also think put it, at the end of the, each episode, you should have like recommendations, and one of them should be the playlist as well, so yeah, so thank you Clara again for the amazing idea, I'll gladly take it on, that will be my contribution, I'll switch it around a bit, I think I'll do like a um, monthly yeah monthly playlist but anyways without like without further ado the songs of the week for this week um are well first of all i have old abbots die hard it's an old song i know by ali x um i've always listened to the song i've always been obsessed with it but the re- the reason I'm, why i'm putting this one because recently i discovered like an alternative version of the song it's like a remix sort of sort of i guess but the funniest thing about this is that it's it, you can stream it on Spotify on an album called Breakup Jams, which is supposed to be like a playlist, but it's not a playlist made by, uh, was it Tyler Oakley? Tyler Oakley, I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird. Like, it's not a, it's not a, I mean, it's not registered as a playlist, but it's registered as an album. But if you click on it, it's just like songs by different artists. Um, but yeah, there's this different version of the song, and yeah. And um, most of the songs of this week, I just realized they are very personal. And I just realized also that how much I share 
when I come here to, to speak with y'all about even the silliest little things, that, which are the songs of the week. But it is sort of like a mood check of what, like, what I've been going through, <laughs> of how I've been feeling. So, old habits die hard. Don't, I don't need to explain myself. Go listen to the song. You prob you'll probably understand what I'm uh, going through this week or just in general, why I'm so obsessed with it. So yeah, that's one of them. Then I have Endlessly by Omar Apollo from his album uh, Ivory. Um, stunning song. Incredible song. Uh, he's so good. He's, um, oh, I don't know, if you don't know uh, Omar uh, Apollo, he's um, a R&B singer. He's I don't want to say it, but I don't know if I'm, if I'm right. But he's Latin American, I think. But he sings mostly in English. Uh, yeah, but he does a lot of R&B. He's open for SZA at a recent concert. So he's really, like, out there, I guess, in the R&B world. So, yeah. I love any of his songs, to be fair. Many of his songs speak to me to, a, to a, like, a different, you know, to a different level. So, yeah. That's a good one. Um, go check it out. Um, it's very like basic guitar-y, I guess, in a way. Uh, so yeah, just literally just what I like. I like R&B that is more like um, not acoustic, but you know, like guitar-heavy in that sense, rather than like synthy, I guess. But yeah, that's one. Um, then I have to shout out my girl Christian. Christian, I think that's how you say her name, but it's um, yeah. She, she is not very well known, I think. Like, no one, she doesn't have that many streams. But, yeah, she, every single, it's one of those weird, like, those weird artists that no one knows about. But she has, like, every single song she puts out is my favorite song. Her recent new track that she put out this week, it's actually a new song from th this year, I think, or something. And it's called Pins and Needles. Very indie, very, um... Very cool song, very cool track. She has a beautiful voice. I love her. She always has a very emotional and emotive, uh, sorry, emotive, yeah, more than emotional, like emo an emotive uh, type of uh, way of singing. So if you're into that, go check it out. She is uh, one of my favorite uh, artists. My favorite song actually by her is uh, Wish I Could Be Your Girl. Um, that's just a banger. It's just so, so fucking good. But yeah, that's my suggestion. Then I also have Off With Her Tits by Ali X again. Ali X making it like but this one is a new song she put out for her upcoming album, I assume. Off with her tits is just fucking shit but like batshit crazy. I'm 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 not sure if she's like referring to like another girl or herself in a song. I'm not really sure. I haven't dwelled like I haven't analyzed this, the lyrics of, of the song, but the beat is beating. It's very like house vibe, not house, but more like synthy. Um dance pop really good totally recommended and yeah then last song recommended is kiss me by sixpence uh wait what's her what's your name sixpence none the richer um you might have well this song is a staple uh it's quite an old song to be fair but yeah it's their most popular song like has a bunch of uh, streams um you must you must know it if you go and listen to it you you will know it but yeah, this also is um, <laughs> speaking to me. It's speaking to me to a deep, deep personal level. I don't want to be perceived, but I will be unfortunately perceived because I'm putting out these tracks for y'all. But yeah, these will be all um, put in yeah in a playlist. But Kiss Me is probably the most central song of the week for me. It's like very stripped down, like acoustic guitar, some uh, snares, and... It's just like a good old fashioned uh, love song. Just wanting to be kissed by the person you love. And you know what? There's something wrong with that. Even just like feelings are disgusting. Ew. Do not talk to me. Leave me alone. <laughs> Anyways, that's, yeah, that's going to be in the, in the playlist. Go check it out. You'll have a bunch of fun. You can catch up on also the other songs that I uh, named the previous weeks. I put in all the songs that I made, because I, I did only like two episodes in December, I think, or three, and one in November, so I'm putting, in January, I'm going to put all of them together, but starting February, I'm going to be doing, I think, the monthly ones, so, because I know I will be having, you know, a more regular um, schedule in that sense, so, yeah, <laughs>
these are a bunch of songs actually they're more than i expected in just one week like literally um yeah go take a listen and uh, yeah before i get back to uh the stories i think the way i'll do the grammys i'll probably pull up on my computer the nominees on the official website and i'll i i know i know some of the people are already nominated. I know some of them. I don't know the full list, but yeah, I'll it'll sort of be also like a, a a reaction to the Grammys, uh, Grammy nominations. So, yeah, and I'll give my um, you know, fresh uh, thoughts on the situation. You know, um, yeah, I'm gonna make my predictions and all that. So we're, we'll probably go through like the main uh, categories and. That shall be it, probably. So we'll go through those, and then we'll move to the second story, Poor Things, yeah? So, yeah, catch y'all in a bit. In a bit, yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into the Grammys. Let's get straight up into it. So yeah, as I said, we're gonna go through the nominations, the 2024 nominations, and we're just gonna react, you know, we're just gonna uh, project, you know, do like some projections and see how they're gonna fare, you know? But yeah, as you may know, the Grammys are, of course, the Recording Academy, um, basically, award, um, award show where they award excellence technically music there's a board of um basically experts and ex-musicians uh ex-pop stars and all of that that every year basically uh, vote on the best songs divided up in genres and the best records the best um albums all based on different genres and yeah usually they have been some of the most influential i guess award season even though like it's common knowledge that some of these awards are all like rigged in a way not rigged but you know like there is some of course in industry pool inside that decides basically not necessarily what's um the most impactful or the most actual like you know excellent a piece of work but more like what they think it should get it according to their own biases so it's just fun to be fair like that's why i always like pay attention to the grammys just because like it's it generates a lot of conversation in the culture and it's just like a lot of fun to see people react to it and all that plus they give us very good performances so yeah but yeah we're gonna start off with the general field which is like the most uh, the biggest ca categories which are record of the year song of the year album of the year and pretty much that's it yeah so yeah and there's a little bit of a, a small, like, one-sentence, basically, description of what the um, category is about. So, for example, let's start off with the Record of the Year, yeah? Record of the Year should be about, is, is an award, basically, about the artist and the producer, or producers, recording engineers, mixers, and mastering engineers. Um, if other, of course, and the artist, but... Yeah, so I guess it awards the... Um, the song in that sense that overall has been the best uh, the best one like the best one produced in that sense so it's not necessarily about like the songwriting or the um, yeah the yeah i guess like it's not specific about the lyrics or um the ability of the singer or whatever but it's most like an overall um award i guess about a specific song um, the nominees are Worship by John Batiste, Not Strong Enough by Boy Genius, Flowers by Miley Cyrus, What Was It Made For by Billie Eilish, On My Mama by Victoria Monet. Oh, okay, I'm surprised to see her here. Okay, that's good. Victoria Monet is getting nominations in the big categories. Like, that's that's really good. Then it's Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo, Antihero by Taylor Swift, Kill Bill by SZA. I knew about SZA, Taylor, Olivia, Billy, and... I knew about Boy Genius, to be fair. I knew about them getting nominated for this, but yeah. Worship by John Batiste doesn't really surprise me. I think, well, John Batiste is a Grammy darling, so he is 
one of the game, Grammy's favorites all, all the time. But I think he maybe wrong, but I think maybe last year he already took home a lot of um, awards. So maybe the, they're not gonna like give the big ones to him this time around. They wanna be um, a bit more generous towards other people. So personally, I I think in terms of record of the year like the best produced track and overall um like mixing and everything else i would say like my favorite one might be um ah uh, vampire or kill bill those are my two favorites the way they're produced overall and everything else like i think it's vampire is like a very theatrical song in my opinion and it has a lot of um interesting switch ups during the the entire song it's a very like a theater like heavy song in that sense like it's a very theatrical musical um type of song love it and it's just super well produced i think but kill bill i think maybe my if i had to be like unbiased i would say kill bill overall like go over vampire because kill bill the production on kill bill is just something incredible just and the way Kill Bill is delivered by Siza is just a completely different thing. I think it might be... I, I think I might... Yeah, my favorite would be Kill Bill by Siza. I think if, if I had to be, like, completely fair. Um, who I think they're actually gonna, uh, gonna award. I think... Um, I think they might actually give it to Billy. I might, I might, I might see that, actually. Because it's both Billy and Phineas. Um, Phineas as producer and writer and Billy as a uh, performer and writer as well so oh and also producer so yeah that's actually yeah I think they might be giving it to Billy honestly I think that the song got a lot of traction already and I wouldn't I, I would see actually I would see them actually getting the award honestly actually with I would see like the Grammys giving it to her and you know what it had an impact on the culture. Maybe I don't think it's the best like record of the year, but yeah. Let's move on to album of the year. Album of the year, of course, awards the artist, the feature artists, songwriter of new material, producers, recording engineers, mixers, mastering engineers, and all that stuff. So it's like an award, of course, championing the best album of the year overall. The nominees are World Music Radio by Joe Batiste, The Record Boy Genius, Endless Summer Vacation by Miley Cyrus, Did You Know That There's a Tunnel on the o Ocean Boulevard by Lana Del Rey, yay. The Age of Pleasure by Jeanne uh, Lamont, period. She's getting nominated again, I'm so excited. Guts by Oliver Rodrigo, of course. Then Midnight by Taylor Swift, yay. And SOS by Siza. Now, I personally would love, would love to see SOS bring it home. I think Midnight's was not Taylor's best album, so I don't think it deserves necessarily to win. Guts, I like Guts. I it, I reevaluated it, and I think it's a, like it grew on me a lot. But I still don't think it's um, the best album that came out this uh, twenty twenty three. Of course, yeah, that year. Um, Age of Pleasure, I liked the, the album by Jean Monet. I think it's actually a very cool album, very nice R&B album. Now, also, selfishly, I would want Lana to take it home. Did you know that there's a tunnel on the Bush Ocean Boulevard? I think it's, like, good enough to be, like, a critically acclaimed album in that sense, like, a, a, an album for the critics. And it's well overdue. Lana's never won any, any of these uh, awards, and she deserves it. Like, she's incredible i have to say that did you know that there is a tunnel under ocean boulevard is not my favorite album to be fair by lana but i do think that there's a lot of like critical um writing and production and there's a lot of like interesting things there going on and i think the critics might actually love it um i would also well i, I would love sos to bring it home as well that would be so good for uh SZA. and i loved the album so much like there's so many songs that are just incredible incredible so <coughs> oh, the police also agreeing with me i guess so yeah i would give it to that who i think is gonna win i don't know why but i have a sneaky uh, like suspicion that the record by boy genius is probably gonna take it home i don't know why i've just been thinking about this the whole time i think why did they even like um put them in 
I mean, deserved. The album is great. But I think if it sounds like something that the Grammys would do, like, you know, award a, a trio of musicians that just came together to do an album. It sounds like that. John Batiste, I don't think he's going to win it. I think he already got a fair share of wins last year. And yeah. But yeah, I'm excited for Jean- uh, Monet to be nominated. That's a great, 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 great achievement for her. Well deserved. And unfortunately, I think the competition is too, like, you know, strong in that sense. But that's an incredible feat in, in, in and of itself, you know? Like, it's just incredible. So, yeah, I would want SOS to win or um, Ocean Boulevard by Lana Del Rey. But I think I, I have this sneaky sub- uh, uh, suspicion that um, the record is going to win. I don't know why. I feel very weird about it. I think they're not going to give it to Olivia or Taylor because the feud between them is well known. <laughs> not the feud, but you know, like they're the same kind of artists, I guess, competing for the same market. And I, I don't think the Grammys would want to like um, upset one or the other. So to avoid that, I think they're going to give the award to someone completely different. So, yeah. Um, Song of the Year... Song of the Year is an award for a songwriter, a song that is eligible if it has first rele- if it was yeah if it was first released or if it uh, first achieved prominence during the eligibility year. So it can be only singles or tracks of an album. So yeah, this is more about the songwriting here. Yeah, a songwriter award. So the nominees are A and W American Horror by uh, Lana Del Rey and Jack Antonoff, um, Anti Hero by Jack Antonoff and Taylor Swift. Butterfly by John Batiste and Ann Wilson, performed by John Batiste, yeah. Then there is Dance the Night Away, no wait, is it just Dance the Night? Dance the Night, yeah. The song by Dua Lipa, Flowers by Miley Cyrus, Kill Bill by SZA, Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo, What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish. Now, personally, I would want A&W to win. A&W is, among all of these, I don't think there's any competition, A&W is the song of the year, it's just the best song ever written like that song is just incredible just go and listen to it it's just an incredible song and i think it should have been also nominated to be fair as record of the year because the production on anw goes hard but i would want anw to win personally i would be fine with um vampire winning because uh, there's some writing there i really like it i like the metaphor with a vampire like you know in a situation ship is pretty 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 good who I think is going to win, I think the Academy is going to probably award. Hmm. It might be Billie Eilish again with what was I made for, or. Hmm. That's interesting. Songwriting. Honestly, hmm. yeah, I think either Billy or. I don't know if it's going to go to Taylor, honestly. I don't think it's going to go to Taylor. I think there's actually a good chance that Lana Del Rey might win this. I would love for a w to win, honestly. That would be an honor. So, yeah, here's for the best. Oh, yeah, we also have Best New Artist in the general category, which is, uh, of course, um, an award for the Best Most Prominent New Artist of the Year. So the nominees are Gracie Abrams, Fred Again, I Spice, Jolly Roll, Coco Jones, Noah Cahan, Victoria Monet and the war and treaty. Um, I think. Wait, Victoria Monet made it here. But she well, I guess she came with ja- Jaguar. She came into prominence this year, I guess. But she's not like a new artist. But anyways, well, neither is Gracie Ab- Abrams. But well, I think like. I Spice is definitely, like, one of the hottest ones that came out this year. I think, personally, I would love Victoria Money to win. But I think, actually, Noah Cannon is going to win. Because he's been, also... I think it's going to be between I Spice and Noah Cannon. I think maybe the actual uh, Grammys would go for Noah Cannon. Um, he's been killing it on the charts. I personally don't really listen to his songs, but, yeah. Maybe he has a fair chance of winning. You know? But, yeah. That is... The one that is producer of the year, non classical, it's um, just for the producers. So it's Jack Antonov, who produced, of course, uh, the 1975 album Being Funny in a Foreign Language. Then it's Did You Know That? Like, he produced also Ocean Boulevard, of course, and Midnight by Taylor Swift. Then it's um, 
Dern's uh, D-Mile Emil the second, with Jaguar uh, Jaguar two by Victoria Monet, and it's Hit Boy then who produced a lot of uh, well, I don't know what the hell well, I don't know him but yeah seems to have to produce a lot of like hip hop songs maybe I don't know Roger Boomin of course also a famous hip hop producer and then there's Daniel Nairo who produced a lot of um, Olivia Rodrigo songs and also uh, Shepard Rowan. I think he might actually go to, um, ooh, this is hard, because this is between Jack, I think, it has to be between Jack and da uh, Daniel Nigro, and again, it's Taylor versus Olivia, so that's going to be interesting. I think, though, overall, I would say, like, I would give it to Jack, because he did some incredible production, uh, production on all the three albums listed here, while he did three albums, Daniel Nigro is um, credited here for... One, two, three, four, five, six, six singles and one album. And Guts is well produced, but I think it's the the level Jack Hansen of produces is just like so complex and so masterful that I think he deserves it again. But yeah, interesting. Very cool. Then we have Songwriter of the Year. <clears throat> I don't know much about these, but I would want personally Edgar Barrera to win. I don't know any of the others, but he produced a lot of like Latin pop, including Gucci Los Paños by uh, Carol G. So he better win. That's all I'm saying. Now let's go into the other interesting field. It's field one, pop and dance electronic music. So we have the first one is Best Pop Solo Performance. It's an award for new vocal or instrumental pop recordings, singles or tracks only. So, new vocal or instrumental pop recordings. So, it's just best pop solo performance. The way, you know, the performance of the artist, I guess, we're awarding here. Um, so, it's Flowers by Miley Cyrus, Paint It on Red by Doja Cat. What was it made for? Oh, okay, Doja Cat didn't make it into the big ones, but she made it into best pop solo performance with Paint It on Red. Interesting. Then it's What Was It Made For, Vampire and Antihero. Not gonna lie. I'd give it to Olivia, this one. I'd probably give it to Olivia on Vampire. But maybe Billy would win. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting. I wouldn't give it to Miley. I wouldn't give it to Doja. I think Doja Doja's song is good. But I don't think it's the best song on the album of Scarlet. But yeah. Then it's Best Pop Duo or Group Performance. So we have an award for new vocal or instrumental for a duo or a group. The uh, nominations are Thousand Miles by Miley Cyrus and Brandy Carlisle, um, Candy Necklace, Landon Ray, and John Batiste. Sure, John Batiste is everywhere. Um, Never Felt So Alone by Labyrinth and Billie Eilish. Well, I thought that song was old. Anyways, and then it's Karma, Taylor Swift with featuring Hi. No fucking way. They put Taylor Swift featuring Ice Spice as best pop duo. Mm mm mm. Not happening. And then it's Ghosts in the Machine instead of featuring Phoebe Bridgers. Um, if I had to be honest, I think like the, the the Recording Academy would actually like award Lana and John Batiste because just what John Batiste is there. Who I think should win, like who I think deserves to win. I actually don't really like mind Never Fall So Alone. That's actually a pretty cool track. Maybe I'll give it to that, but pff, these are weak, weak performances. Come on, why are we not bringing in 2024 any K-pop groups into this? Like, these should have been filled with K-pop groups. Or any other group, to be fair. There's also a lot of, like, groups out there that are non-K-pop that deserve to be in this. You know what I mean? But anyways, I guess the Grammys are just, like, not... They're still stuck on their ways. But anyways, I don't know. I just pff, think there's so much more stuff out there. Now we have Best pop, pop Vocal Album for albums containing greater than 75% playing time of new pop uh, pop vocal recordings. Whatever that means. I don't fucking know what's different than between... Who knows? We have Chemistry by Kelly Clarkson. Hell no. Then we have Endless Summer Vacation by Miley Cyrus. Hell no. Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Mm, maybe. Then we have Subtract by Ed Sheeran. Hell no. And then we have Midnight by Taylor Swift. Interesting. I actually am a feeling that this might go to Gods by Oliver Drago. Mm, even though we could go to uh, to Taylor, maybe. I think they might give Taylor an award. 
I think it might be this one, maybe. Who knows? Maybe it could be. I'm not really sure, to be fair. I don't think... Best, best pop vocal album. I think the most interesting vocal um, performances on the albums that, I've, that are listed here are on Gods, to be fair. Like, Getting Back or Bad Idea. Those are very interesting, like, performances in that sense. But, I don't know. I wouldn't be mad if Gods won. Let's just say that. Then we have... I'm going to skip uh, electronic recording because I don't know much about it. Uh, oh, let's do this one. Best pop dance recording. So it's for solo, duo, group, or collaborative performances. Vocal or instrumental, single, or tracks only. So we have Baby Don't Hurt Me, David Guetta, Anne-Marie, and uh, Coyle Ray. Okay. Then we have Miracle by Calvin Harris and Ali Golding. Padam Padam by Kali Minogue. Period. Oh. One in a Million, B.B. Rex and David Guetta. And Rush by Tori Sivan. Ooh, okay, interesting. Um, I think, actually, they might give the award to Rush by Tori Sivan. I think, actually, like, that song deserves it. I wouldn't be bad if, actually, Kylie Minogue got the award as well. Those two are my faves as well. The other ones, they're okay, but Rush and Padam Padam are the most interesting ones, in my opinion. And I wouldn't be mad if either of them got it. I, I have a feeling that maybe they will give it to uh, Tori Sivan. Who knows? Okay, let's go to uh, rock metal and alternative. I, I'm not. I'm gonna. Um, oh, okay, interesting. I'm looking at best rock performance, and there is a song by no, by Genius, not strong enough. I don't think that's a, that's a rock song, to be fair. But <laughs> okay, and then there's also Sculptures of Anything Goes by Arctic Ar Ar Arctic Monkeys. Well, I don't know. That's quite weird. You know what? I think Not Strong Enough is a good song, but I don't think it's rock. It's not rock. But I think they might win it. I think the award might give it to them, to be fair. Metal, I don't know much. Best rock song. Again, we have Not Strong Enough, which is weird. I don't know. I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to go to alternative because i want oh yeah, yeah yeah let's go best alternative music performance we have belinda says by always then we have body pain by arctic monkeys that song is so good cool about it by boy genius and w blander ray this is why by paramore um interesting maybe uh, well i'm biased i would say a and w or Body Paint. I really like Body Paint, honestly. I think they might give it to Cool About It, though, by Boy Genius. But, yeah. And W deserves it. Then, Best Alternative album, uh, Music Album is um, The Car by Arctic Monkeys, The Record by Boy Genius, Ocean Boulevard by Lander Ray, Cracker Island by Gorillaz, and then it's I Inside Old Year Dying by PJ Harvey. Um... Okay, interesting choices. I love The Car. The Car by Ar the Arctic Monkeys is such a good, good album. Oh my god, it's so good. I would want it to go to that, personally, as an alternative uh, album. I think they might give... If, if Lana doesn't win album of the year, I think they're going to give it to her year. Like, they're going to give her the Ocean Boulevard... Um, yeah. Award here. Yeah. I think so. I think that's going to be it. I think they might... If That's the thing. If not... If she wins album of the year, they weren't gonna give it to uh, Boy Genius actually, but I would want the, the card to win in this category because the album is so fucking good. Okay, let's finish off with R and B and rap, and then we can wrap it up this side of the of the of the first story, you know. So, best R and B performance. Summer Too Hot by Chris Brown, Back to Love by Robert Glasper featuring S-I-R, I don't know what that is, but then it's I See You by Coco Jones, period, How Does It Make You Feel by Victoria Monet, period, and then Kill Bill by Sida. Um, oh, interesting, Kill Bill slaps. I would actually want How Does It Make You Feel, actually, oh, my mama would be good though. I See You is also good. I think I might actually give it to Victoria Monet here. Even though this is my clear to be fair in the R and B, I I like Kill Bill a lot. So 
I wouldn't be mad if I think maybe they might give it to Seiza to be fair. She's gonna clear. She's in all, all in all the R and B categories. She's in it, so she's probably gonna clear this uh, this one. So we have best traditional R and B performance, and it's simple by Babyface featuring Coco Jones, Lucky by Canyon Dixon, Hollywood by Victoria Monet, Good Morning by P J Morton. Uh, and then we have Love Language by Cesar. I think actually here there's a good chance that Victoria Monet could win it because I like that song so much and it's quite cr like it, I can see the the award giving it to her, you know. Then best R&B song for a songwriter. So he's a songwriter most of all. Angel by Halle Bailey. Oh my God. Okay, she made it. Interesting. Back to Love by um, Robert Glasper featuring a, a Sir. Then it's I See You by Coco Jones. Then it's um, On My Mama by Victoria Monet. Oh my god, she made it, she made it. Uh, Snooze by SZA. Oh, oh, Snooze is here. Oh, Snooze might win then. I think he's going to win. But I would want also On My Mama to win, to be fair. That, those two are my favorite R&B songs of the year, to be fair. I think it, Snooze might win, though. SZA's going to clear. There's no way, you know? Then there's Best Progressive R&B Album. So it's The Love... By oh sorry, right. since I have a lover by um, Black, then it's the Love Album of the Grid by Diddy, novel by Terrace Martin and James Fontleroy, <clears throat> The Age of Pleasure by Jean Monáe. Period. Jean Monáe and Victoria Monáe are killing it this year. Um, and then SOS. So uh, like, what? Well, let me let me see. Okay, so SOS is not, SOS is not credited credited in best R and B album, but it, she is in the. Best progressive, so I think they're going. She's gonna win here, and then best R&B album might go to. Oh, there's different. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's do this. I think best progressive R&B album is gonna go to SOS. Then best R&B album the nominees are Girls Night Out by Babyface, Why Did I Tell You by, Why Oh Sorry Why I Didn't Tell You by Coco Jones, Special Occasion by Emily King, Jaguar Two by Victor Monet, and Summer Walker doing Clear Two. I think Jaguar Two might win best R&B album. Then interesting. Oh my god. I know there was this difference between that. But yeah, I think Progressive R&B Album is going to go to SZA because she's nominated. And I think Best R&B Album is going to go to Victoria Monet with Jaguar 2. And deserved, honestly. Deserved. <clears throat> I would want them to win as well. Let's finish off with Rap. Best Rap Performance. The Hip Hilly Billies by Bebby Keem. And then we have Love Letter by Black Thoughts. Then we have Rich Flex by Drake and 21 Savage, Scientists and Engineers by Killer Mike featuring Andre 3000, Future, and Aaron Allen Kane. And then Players by Color A. Oh, not Players, bitch. I think... I think, actually, I think Drake might win this because Rich Flex is also with 21 Savage and they've had great stats in terms of... Um, Rap. I, I guess so. Then we have Best Melodic Rap. So there is a <coughs> R&B melody incorporated in the in a rap song. So, interesting. Um, yeah, so the nominees are Thing on the Top of the World by Burna Boy featuring 21 Savage. Attention by Doja Cat. Ooh, okay, I like that. Then Spin About You by Drake and 21 Savage. All My Life by Lil Dirk and J. Cole. Ooh, okay. And then Low by SZA. Um, you know what? I think actually Attention might win it. Even though Spin About You might have some chance of winning as well. But I think Attention might actually win in this one. Because Melodic Rap in that sense, Attention is a great, great song. I love that song. Especially the second verse, Killer. So I think actually Attention might have some chance of winning, to be fair. Then it's best rap song given to the songwriter, so it's more like about the bars here. We have Attention Again by Doja Cat, Barbie World, oh, oh Nicki Minaj, okay. Interesting, best rap song, okay. Just Wanna Rock, Rich Flex by Drake, and then Scientists and Engineers by Killer Mike. I think Attention should actually win it. We're talking about songwriting. Barbie World is a fun song, but I, would, I wouldn't award it for... Um, songwriting, you know? Like, it's a fun song, but I wouldn't award it for that. Attention, on the other hand, is quite interesting. Like, it's a very good... Like, the bars are good. The bars are good there. So I think I would give it to Doja, and she might actually win him. Best Rap Album. We have Her Loss by Dragon21 Savage, of course. Michael by Killer Mike. 
Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin, King's Disease by Nas, and Utopia by Travis Scott. Ooh, interesting. Uh, honestly, uh, I think it might go to Drake, even though I don't want him. I like Metro Boomin, to be fair. Heroes and Villains was a good one. But I think he might actually go to Drake. Yeah. Is that it? I guess so. And then there's Jazz, but I don't know much about that. But yeah, what a wild... Yeah, what a wild ride. Well, there's also Country and American Roots, but I don't know much about that and musicals. Um, yeah, that was an interesting one, you know? A lot of inter uh, interesting songs this year and albums. I think the competition is fierce, and I'm excited to see The Mass. I'm excited to see The Mass. I think... It's very female-centric this year, which is quite exciting. It hasn't been this female-centric in a while. So, yeah, 2023 was for the girls, to be fair. So, I'm excited to see what happens, you know? I have my faves. There's a lot of, like, songs and albums that I really enjoyed this year. So, I, to be fair, whatever happens, I might enjoy it. As long as I don't give it to, like, useless people. So, pfft, I to, to, like, albums that didn't have any impact at all to the culture. So, which sometimes happens with, for example, um, John Batiste. But, yeah, I think whatever happens in terms of uh, the girlies, I think I'm going to be fine with it. They all deserve some sort of success because they all put so much work in it. So, yeah. Excited to see what that, what's going to happen. We're probably going to cover, as, as, like as I said, uh, when the, the <clears throat> results come out. But, yeah, stay tuned for that. And we're going to get into the next story soon. Stay tuned. See you in a bit. Yum. Here we go again. Last story. Um, we're getting, as I said, into Poor Things, the critically acclaimed movie from 2023. Beautiful, 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 be beautiful movie. It's already been receiving a lot of praise uh, by the uh, different, you know, award um, boards and all that stuff. And it's just, like, a very, 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 like, nice thing to see, you know? It's a good, good movie. I've always known I wanted to watch it. So let me get into my notes and I will talk about this in depth, you know? So let's start off with... um. Yeah, well, I just said, like, also in the intro that I went to watch it, like, recently because of the... Well, I've seen trailers before, and they've always struck me, and they've always been very, very captivating, just the cinematography in general, and plus Emma Stone is in it, so that's a deal set, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah. So, I really wanted to watch it. Then I saw the critically um, positive reviews in that sense, uh, and I, I knew it had it had to be something good, you know. I knew I knew it like I had to check it out in some way. So then, yeah, when I came back to England, I went um, to the nearest uh, cinema and went to watch it, you know. So yeah, um, so yeah, I wrote the note, uh, notes actually as soon as I got off the, the cinema, as usual, because it's the thing that helps me the most in that sense. Uh, just having my fresh thoughts on paper. And also, I'm going to add some more things to that because I had time to reflect on it a bit. Well, a week, less than a week, but yeah. So, yeah, it was that good. Like, it sparked a lot of, like, conversations and I had to make notes immediately because it was that good. I would say it's a very complex movie and very artistically motivated, if you get what I mean. Like, it's so... It's about the art, you know? It's about the art of cinematography. So, it's so good. I'm very, very much impressed. Um, I want to put a disclaimer first. This is a very, very explicit movie. Quite a lot of nudity. A lot of... Well, there's some violence in it as well. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. If you are willing to go and watch... Um, there's a lot, a lot about sex and all about that. So be aware. If you're not into that or if you... do Well, definitely don't bring your children to this. But yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, but I think if you're above 18, you should actually not be intimidated at all. Because, um, you know, it's um, it's a challenging movie, but it's good. It's a good challenge, you know? I mean, if you watch Euphoria, you can definitely watch this. Like, that's the kind of um, explicitness, I guess, um, that's in this movie. That's the, the level, yeah. Um... 
another warning should be for blood there's a lot of surgery um like involved in a movie that like there's uh, surgery tables and like people getting in surgery and a lot of that um so yeah if you're if you have a weak stomach or you cannot handle that keep that in mind but um i'm not going to be going to too much of the specifics of the plot i will try to keep this as spoiler free as possible so you can go and like perhaps enjoy it yourself at the movie theater you know that's the whole point of this review um yeah, so this is a story of a woman who committed suicide and was brought back to life by a crazy uh, scientist slash surgeon, I guess, slash inventor. And I guess, like, the, it's, it's, of course, like, um, an invented world, but it has real, like, real-world cities in that sense. Like, it's mostly based in London than other cities in Europe. And time-wise, I think it looks more like... Um, like, early 1900s, I guess, maybe? I don't know or something like that um but yeah the um, this woman in, the woman in question the protagonist is bella baxter played by the brilliant of course emma stone and she has no recollection of her life before she was revived basically before she was saved so as a matter of fact it seems like everything has been reset for her she's practically a child for real for real in the body of a grown woman like we literally start off um yeah from from the beginning of the movie you can see that she has uh, she, she has to learn how to talk to walk to eat and everything else basically like she's starting uh, her life afresh basically new anew you know all back to square zero uh the reason for this will be explained in the movie for for sure and it's quite actually early on when they explain it why she's like she has no recollection of everything before they will explain that and i'll leave that to you to discover because it's quite a twist we we'll never have imagined that um, yeah. So, this basically sets up the entire movie, because the point of the whole plot is basically to discover what life is, together with Bella Baxter, of course, like, through her, like, her own experiences, we have to discover what's the point of life and what life is all about, you know? So, as I said, I love how artistically inclined this movie is. The fashion and the cinemat cinematography are all very congru congruent and very, like, they make sense. Damn, today the... The police is just going off. But yeah, fashion and cinematography, incredible. And the sets as well are all very cohesive. Like, you know, they're. it feels like a very big artistic statement. Like, very cohesive artistic piece um, that has the quality of a... I would say, like, it, to me, it seems more like a child's playbook. The type of, like, world they build and the way it's, like, uh, like the color saturated and... The sets are built. They, uh, I've seen some uh, interviews after the, the, watching the movie, and uh, the director actually said that um, they've used most uh, mostly practical uh, effects and sound stages. So it's all basically like a prop, which is pretty cool, very very cool. Um, there's very minimal VFX, uh, which is outstanding, honestly. Like we should bring that back to Hollywood because everything these days seems well. I think we're seeing a, a, a turn into that in very recent movies like uh, smaller budgets for greater artistic purposes you know what i mean so you proving the point that you can make a very um enticing i guess uh, movie without having to use shit ton of like um vfx and all of that so yeah um yeah so definitely one of the major points that i think also attracted me to the movie was this um artistic choice and this very cohesive um world they built basically yeah um colors are vibrant the world is very immersive you know the architecture is is very extravagant the fashion is early as i said like it's very early 1900 inspired i guess just um a pure beauty you know i also have to comment here very quickly on emma stone's costumes so cunty and elegant like imagine like having to dress up like 19 early 1900 but like reworked as a bit of a modern twist with it like to like modern days basically so it's so cool the character has a very defined look which is the sign of a very successful movie in my opinion because um a signature look helps to make the character stick out and be remembered for years to come basically um yeah so it is to me that also helps the movie to cement uh itself as a cult classic all of our dresses are basically super colorful uh, colorful and they play on the same feature of extremely puffy leaves uh, sleeves like 
you know those like shoulder um puffs they're like very puffy sleeves like especially the shoulder area i don't know it's i think you know what i'm talking about but yeah she, that's her like her signature look together with her very long 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 black hair uh, but she has so many variations of these um very puffy um uh, like sleeved sh uh, shirts and um like full full body dresses and corsets and all that stuff uh just stunning you know like they they're all they use so many different materials but they it all seems to be like very well thought out and very well like part of her character so it was just beautiful um and there you go you have a signature look you know and it's just so cunty like i love gosh my favorite one has to be the one where she's in paris and she joins the socialist movement it's just so fucking cool like it's like um a full black um coat but still with these puffy very puffy uh sleeves and her i think her hair is like in a braid or something and she has this like little book with in, in her hand like the manifesto and she's like just like you can tell that she's turning into like a real woman like a um, cultured woman interested in politics. it's just like oh beautiful beautiful um yeah go go check some pinterest mood boards about bella baxter and you'll be surprised like it's so 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 interesting but yeah and this is also as well uh, complemented, as I said, by the sceneries as well. So Bella throughout the movie goes on a journey that brings her from London to Lisbon to Paris and then even more like she goes to Greece. I think she goes to Alexandria, I can't remember. Um, but they all have these very extravagant and luxurious but also gimmicky sort of um, props. Very cool stuff. Like it feels, as I said, like a um, child's playbook. It's uh, so, 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 so nice. Um... But apart from the visuals, the movie also, I think, excels in the plot. Of course, the plot is the main point, of course. But I'm a very, like, visual person. I like having, uh, like, unusual cinematography and all that stuff. So that strikes me the, the most at first. And then the plot is also something that, of course, is very important. But, you know, it needs to fit into the, the vision of the movie, I guess, to make it, you know, a remarkable one. But, yeah, so the, the visual side, excellent. But also the plot, excellent, you know? It's a very clever idea, as I said, to, like, basically explore the meaning of life through basically this like revived character sort of situation it's truthfully like and there's more to it so you when you find out about the plot of the movie you'll just like think that it's just genius you know it's truthfully like basically a movie that has at its center the human condition the many emotional hurdles and complex problems that affect both people and society as a whole um i think what's more by following Bella's steps um until she like than fully blooms as her own person, the movie manages to flip on its head a lot of like societal norms and moralities and just basically our normal day to day life because that's the beauty of it. Like you literally, um, as a spectator, I guess you can like relive life from zero, but with your already cemented moralities, and you can see how like the movie is so cleverly putting that into question like all these things that we think are sacred and unchallengeable are actually just turned on its head and like on their head and like it's just beautiful just very well executed um bella also innocently and quite hilariously i think um questions all of these uh, man-made social rules and makes you question a lot of the the also like sex norms i would say that are specifically um put on women i think this movie like on like on second thought after making these notes i that's why i came also to a conclusion it's like a very feminist movie but without being overtly um feminist yeah it's like it it's about body autonomy as well there's a lot of that there's a lot of like talk about sex workers as well uh but it's done not like like as a very uh on your nose like um type of like type of type of movie it's not one of those like um a bit you know um, how to say like daunting feminist movies it's like a very like feminism is infused in a movie but it's done in a very clever and like just a funny little story that you can follow you you root for Bella and you as, as I said like by watching her um, grow and like have this like you know very funny approach to life and like flipping moral norms you also get basically a lot of you know feminist ideas into your little brain as you should like you should you learn a lot about like you know common sense feminism so yeah kudos to that like very very sophisticated you know just beautiful um so yeah it's like also the viewers by following her have to reboot together with bella basically right and um 
I think he's also pretty successful be precisely because Bella retains her adult body and makes it easier to fully empathize with her rather than watching it like a an actual kid grow up, like in other movies, for example. Like, you you can, like, empathize with her by the mere fact that she's a, a, an adult, but with a brain of a baby, basically, like, you know? Um, the movie's extremely th uh, thought-provoking, I guess, and very daring in some ways. Um, I love it. Like, also effortlessly funny and knows when to take itself seriously and when to let go. Um, it also doesn't shy away from the, as I said, like the sexual uh, discourse of ba like the sexual side of Bella, her sexual needs, and after all, it is it is a journey about um, a character exploring himself, so herself, sorry. Um, so yeah, like it's a totality, I guess. Like it's a full um, journey. Um, I actually find Emma Stone's uh, quote when accepting the Golden Globe uh, Award because she won, like, literally this week or last weekend, basically. Very, very interesting. Like, it's very well-fitting. Um, describes the movie perfectly, in my opinion. She described the movie basically as a love story between Bella Baxter and life itself because it is the truth. It is a love story, but despite her having, like, so many love interests in the movie, ultimately it's about her falling in love with life. Like, going through emotions, first hate, like loving it, discovering it, then hating it, then loving it. It's just that good, you know? Also, I want to shout out Mark Ruffalo. I'm not going to shout out to Emma Stone, because she, like, if you know her, anything about her, she's going to do a great job. Like, she's impeccable in the movie. She's truly the centerpiece of the movie, of course. But, yeah, I'm not going to go too much into her, because she's just, like, you know, there's no need for that. She just does, like, an incredible job. Uh, yeah, Mark Ruffalo to me was a great um, surprise because I was used to like seeing him in Marvel movies and that's it. But here he plays uh, one of the main love interests uh, of Bella, um, a rich lawyer who brings Bella around the world and away from her creator and who also quickly turns out to be a controlling and hedonistic man. Yeah, um, He's so funny and I think he's also perfectly cast for the role. Is such a good actor and also a, a great, um, you know co-star to Emma uh, Emma Stone. They just have this chemistry that's just like so, so, so funny. Um, the acting is impeccable. I don't have to say much about Emma Stone. I know they made fun of him uh, in the interviews about his accent, because they're supposed to have like a British accent, but he's not really doing a good job. But apart from that, it's just so funny. Uh, she's perfect, and we all like, uh, like he's perfect and she's perfect, so they have a great chemistry in the, in the role. Also, shout out to Willem Dafoe, who also plays God Godwin Baxter, Godwin Baxter is basically the yeah, Bella's creator and demonstrous, uh, demonstrous scientist. You know he's he once again manages to get a cast uh, get cast in a role that is like about a monstrous looking man. Like you know he did the um, the Goblin in Spider Man and he did like other movies as well where he's the villain, like the evil man. I guess his like his face um, screams that. But in this movie, his face is covered in scars from all of his uh, the experiments and, and surgeries that he did on himself and his father did on him. There's a lot of like that. Uh, it looks more like Frankenstein's mo monster himself more than Bella because Bella seems to be like to me like a female version of like uh, there is a bit of influence of that like uh, Frankenstein's monster, but like the truly like look like monstrous looking man his uh, yeah Godwin Baxter yeah, but Bella remains gorgeous like she's stunning. Um, I'm not gonna dwell more into the plot, but just yeah, go and check it out. If you want something challenging, but also very entertaining and very, like, um, you know, something that's going to make you reflect and also appreciate a lot more your life and everyone around you, and women specifically as well, go to the movies. Get a ticket. Go watch uh, Poor Things. It is worth it. It is... Honestly, I hope it wins Best Picture, because it's, like, actually that good, in my opinion. And it's one of those cases where the critics actually write and they do a good job at, you know, publicizing it as well. So he deserves all the accolades that he's been receiving, and it will probably receive also at the Oscars soon, hopefully. Um, I think also, yeah, and also won already, like, Best Actress um, for, the, for this movie at the Critics' Choice Award as well. So the critics are loving it. So I am very pleased. Uh, she deserves it. So great job. Masterful work. Oh, oh, yeah, also shout out to the director, of course. Yeah, Yorgos uh, Latimos. He's just gifted, you know? Truly impressive science, uh, science fantasy black comedy, you know? That's how, would it, like, how you would probably describe this. It's just 
so 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 good but yeah um hope you do go and watch it i hope you do enjoy the movie if you do go and watch it um bring maybe a friend with you you'll have a lot of like also yeah I, oh before i close off i wanted to say like i was very very much impressed with the fact that um my theater was full and it, i went at 2 p.m in the afternoon and my theater was almost full i haven't been in a full theater in a while because movies you know they haven't been bringing people in that much anymore like we all stream stuff now um and whatever but i was so 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 pleasantly surprised to see like all these people coming to the movies it was just that good like people are talking about it there's chatter about it it's a moment you know it's it's a moment in itself so don't deprive yourself of this experience go and watch it you know just go and watch it uh you'll you'll thank me later you know but yeah this is pretty much it for this week i hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead of you and I'll see you next week for another episode. Um, thank you for listening. And yeah, catch you later. Bye.